Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. So like a week ago I was scrolling through TikTok and I found someone recommending their favorite film camera and I started looking it up on eBay and then I found people were recommending the Pentax K1000 instead for, it was a little bit more expensive but it was a little bit better quality so I started looking that up and then I had to go to work and I was like okay after work I'm gonna buy one because I wanted a film camera for a long time and then my mom sent me a picture of one and said I found it in my back of the closet, do you want it? So I said yes, but she also gave me two of her other old film cameras and my dad's old film camera and a bunch of accessories. I think she said the camera is from like 1979 is when she first got it. And I don't know how old the other cameras are. So this is the one that I'm going to try shooting on first. I want to learn about all of them, but I would like to be a little bit proficient in film before I just start to learn every camera. So this is the Pentax K1000. This is the lens she sent me with it. I also bought Portra 400 film. It's in my fridge right now though, and it's really hot outside, so I don't want to bring it outside. Because that's what I saw people recommending for this camera. And then accessories for that, I think this lens goes with it. It came in this little thingy. If not, this lens goes with one of the other cameras. But this is the other lens she gave me. Beck Daisy. Uh, 135 millimeter. This is exciting. I don't know anything about this lens or even what it's called because the case doesn't say it or anything. But it seems cool. I'm excited to try that after I learn how to use the first lens that's actually on it. Uh, here's the little... So this little pouch she gave me it comes with little lens filters. I think they're just for like macro photography. There's three different ones. There's that one. This one says 49 millimeter plus two, made in Japan. <laughs> Ew. And then this last one says the exact same thing. This might just be the same one, but wrapped in plastic. This one says plus four instead of plus two. So I, I don't know what that means. It might just be how much it magnifies. She kept the original manual so I can learn through the original manual. Ooh, it has a 12 month warranty. I wonder if that's expired. Thankful for that. They even, so they put this little note in the manual. It's their own little disclaimer. It says, in error, some of our catalogs incorrectly describe this Pentax camera to have split image focusing. Actually, it has the handier pentaprism finder with focusing screen, which is the only way this fine camera is made. And then it just talks about how everything else in the manual is correct, just not that part. This little ring, I don't know what this ring is for. It might be for one of the other cameras. This is all of the warranty information. Oh yeah, here's, so my mom bought it 2-6-1979. So she was under 24 when she bought this. That's so interesting. She got it at a department store. She was in college. Did she trade it in with another camera? No. General business student. That's cute. I don't know why. My mom always filled stuff out like that. When I, I don't know if that was necessary. Obviously, I know that it's my mother's, but like it's cool that I can trace all the history in this. And like the exact date and everything that she bought it. Uh, this is the cap for if you take the lens off. This is her little flash. I think it's a battery powered flash if I ever want to use that. I don't know if I do, but that's handy to have too. It literally comes with everything. These are the batteries that I bought to put in them since her original battery is dead. I'm not sure what this wire is for, but I'm sure it's handy for something. And then she even kept, this is the original battery container. She kept the little plastic and cardboard that the original battery came in. Oh, my dog just hit her head. Are you okay? Okay. So that's everything that my mom gave me with that camera. And then I bought Portra 400. I'm going to load that and I'm going to be up in Lake Powell this weekend where I will be attempting to take photos with that. And then I'm going to get it developed. And by the end of this video, you're going to know if that camera is still in working condition and if I know how to use it which I'm really excited for. And the other camera she gave me, I have, I know like nothing about. This was hers. It's a Snappy K Canon is all it says, 35 millimeter, just this. I think, so the Pentax I believe is an SLR. I think this is just a little point and shoot, but I think this will be the last one I practice on if I start to learn more. 
this one I think is absolutely adorable is this little camera. So like this is the shutter? Is that what you'd call it on this? A uh, Kodak Pocket Instamatic 10 camera. This is the flash that she said came with it. It's just missing the bulb. So like here's a little viewfinder. She has her name printed on it. This one is like adorable. I just want to use it because of how cute it is. I again know nothing about this one. I don't know if it takes film or if it's just a point and shoot or what the fuck did I just do to it. If you know anything about Kodak pa pa it? Kodak Pocket Instamatic, comment so I can learn that. And then this was my father's camera. It came in this little case. He told me it was cheap. The case just says Yashika. I am American and dumb. The lens is dented a little bit right here, but I don't think that's an issue because it's not scratched. So that's the four film cameras that my mom just gifted to me, so like probably hundreds of dollars with all the lenses and everything else, which I'm really lucky, but I don't know why she didn't tell me that she had these earlier. But I'm gonna go put the film in for this one and I'll see you guys again when I have all the film developed. Hi guys, so it's been a few weeks and I finished all 36 frames of this, frames? I finished all 36 exposures and I'm about to go get it developed but I'm going to say a few things before I get developed so that could change after I get developed. One, 36 is kind of a lot. It's more than I thought because I was thinking sometimes when I go out and I take pictures like for Instagram, I have my boyfriend and my friends take like 50 and then I pick from there, but when you're using film, you're not gonna take 50 in the same spot. You're probably just gonna take one or two in the same spot and just pray that those two turn out. It takes a lot longer to go through 36 than I thought it would, which I thought 36 would be the better option, but honestly, if you're only trying to take a few pictures and you want them back ASAP, 24 might be a better option. Two, I found a YouTube video that is really, really good for showing you how to load and unload this exact camera. I will link it down below. The only thing that I was confused about on that video was when you first load it, you're gonna wind it and click the shutter twice. You're not wasting any film when you do that. You're not wasting two or anything. It comes with two at the beginning that look like film. I'm not sure what they are, but they're just blanks. You're not wasting them when you press it twice. It's in there so that you can wind it and make sure it's stuck in there. And then I'll probably insert a picture because mine's on 36, but the camera also adjusts for it. It has two notches before zero. So to get those two through, you have to do two to get to zero. So like everything adjusts for it. I've watched a few videos where people are talking about someone like wasting film while they were loading it. And I thought that's what they meant, but it's not. You don't have to waste film while you're loading it. That also might be self-explanatory to some people, but it really wasn't to me. <laughs> This one is probably the one that could change. It's really easy to shoot on. The little pin in the middle tells you exactly how you want to expose it. You just have to adjust for that. And the ISO or ASA in this case is literally just whatever film you put in there. You never have to guess it or decide it. It's just whatever film you put in there is what you're going to do for that. A lot of videos that I found have said overexpose rather than underexpose because Whereas when you're shooting digital, you might want to underexpose so you can get details in the shadows back. If you do that in film, you're not going to get your details back. It's just going to be a dark image. I tried to mostly just do the right exposure, maybe overexpose it a little bit, and we'll see how those turn out. I, again, when I'm taking it into the shop, I don't know if this camera has any, like, internal damage or anything. And luckily, the store that I'm taking it to get developed at is also a camera repair shop. So if it comes back bad, they'll probably tell me what's wrong and fix it for me. And here comes the film development. I thought that would be the easiest part. I thought that'd be like taking it into a Target or a CVS and just like giving them the film and getting it back like a day later and paying a few bucks. But I found out through asking people in my local area and watching YouTube videos, a lot of the YouTubers I watched do their own film developing. I'm not at that level yet, so I'm not doing that yet. But everyone that I did ask that goes to get it developed said that you should definitely trust a local store, a family home store something not big brand before you trust like a CVS or Target with developing your film. If you're in the Phoenix area, maybe a little south or north, depending on how far you want to drive, I got recommended Tempe camera by two different people. Another thing was I was looking on their website and I was so confused on what to ask for when I go in there, but he just texted me and said that they were really nice and if I just tell them that I want 
the film photos on my phone. They'll know what I'm talking about and they'll explain it to me and they'll help me out. I did try to look it up on the website so I don't come in completely uneducated, but it confused me a little bit. Luckily, most people that I've talked to have shot film before are really nice about it and no one's like judging you or anything for not knowing any of it. But let's see if any of my opinions change after we go get it developed. I definitely stand by everything I said in that last clip that was a few days ago but I think I still stand by everything you said because they did come out one of them is actually my favorite turned out blurry not blurry but like out of focus but I kind of like how that looked in that I'm super happy with them I do recommend this camera I should have got it checked before I started shooting with it I didn't realize so many places that have labs also will check your camera for you like I, I read a lot of reviews and people are saying they check a Tempe camera really easy and they'll even like clean it up for you and stuff which I kind of need for this one. But luckily it was fine when I shot with it and everything, nothing was broken. If you are new just like me and you're a little bit confused about the whole process of getting your film back and everything, I would 100% recommend Tempe camera if you're in the Tempe Phoenix East Valley. They were so nice. The first girl when I brought my film in, I walked in and I immediately was like, this is my first role I'm ever developing, <laughs> like can you please help me? And she showed me everything, she explained what everything meant, she answered all the questions I had and she gave me like an estimate for what the price would be which ended up being accurate. And then usually she said that they will put it on a CD but they realize a lot of people like me who has a newer Mac is not going to be able to read a CD. So she offered a USB instead and that's what I got. That was a really nice easy fast interaction. I brought it in Monday afternoon and it said it was ready Thursday afternoon. I ended up getting it today which is a Friday because I was working when it was ready. What I asked for was it's 35 millimeter, develop, not printed. I wanted the scans, scan to USB, and I had 36 frames and that cost me about $20 which is a little bit of money when you're already paying for film and everything especially since I didn't buy my camera but if you bought your own camera it's a little bit more expensive but that's the price you pay for shooting on film because they did a really good job and I definitely would not have been able to do that myself when I went to pick it up the guy was really nice too he was fast and I didn't have any more questions because I was just picking up but I did notice that a woman had brought in a really old roll of negatives and wanted those printed out but she didn't want to pay for every single one printed out because it was a lot of money and he helped her look through and figure out which ones she did want printed so they have excellent customer service and if you're confused they will help you that's really nice of course if you're not in the Tempe area DM people that you know post film pictures in your area post something and ask questions people in the film industry I figured out are usually really nice in fact they put all of my negatives in a little box with the receipt tape to it and what I was super excited about was they gave me little preview cards oh my god it's so bright they gave me little preview cards and I was really happy about that because that meant that I knew that I wasn't messing up all of my pictures and that they actually turned out. Then they gave me the little flash drive and it all came in this little packet. Everything you could ever need, $20. So do I recommend trying a film camera? Yes. It can be a little bit of money, but photography is an expensive hobby whether you're doing it digital or film. You can find really cheap film cameras. I know some on eBay might go for like $10, there's definitely, I think this one's only in like the $100 range and it's really nice. Or ask your parents, I thought my mom got rid of everything that she had when she was my age, but she's the one that texted me and said she had this. So ask them to go through the back of their closet, your aunts, uncles, anyone in your family. See if they have them. I really like Portrait 400, I haven't shot any of the film, but like, yeah, that's the only stuff that I had to deal with. Like, it was a really fun experience. I know I still have a lot to learn. But I feel like I did pretty well for my first roll of film. 
So let me know what you'll see from me. Let me know if you have any other questions about it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.